The Mirage Lynx comes factory equipped with a transducer mount on the underside of the hull. I'm gonna walk through installation of a hook reveal five split shot. We also have another um, aftermarket transducer mount that'll accept a triple shot or an active imaging three in one or total scan if you want side scan imaging. Uh, a lot of people fishing in the shallower waters are gonna benefit greatly from that side imaging picture that some of the units give them. But for the basic installation right now, we're gonna walk through the installation of a split shot transducer on this Hook Reveal 5. First thing we've gotta do is remove the transducer mount from the bottom of the boat. So the easiest way to do that is turn the kayak upside down, pull that off, and then we'll mount up the transducer. After that, it's just simply running the wires. And there's a couple different ways that you can do that. A drill speed things up, but anytime you're working with inserts on the boat, and especially when you're cutting threads into these plastic in inserts like this, it's kind of nice, uh, gives you a little peace of mind that you're not gonna damage the threads you're cutting. So I always like to use a manual tool for that. And I've actually already got the hardware configuration on this transducer. So screw first, and then the C-clip oriented like so, and the Lowrance adapter on either side of the tr transducer, another C-clip, and that stainless lock nut on the outside. I'm gonna slide this assembly down the vertical post so the C-clips are on the outside, and the Lowrance adapters, the black plastic wing adapters, are on the inside. I'm actually gonna leave a gap between the transducer and the plate so that the water can completely surround the transducer and allow that transducer to perform at its best. With a 3 8 wrench and Phillips driver, you're gonna go ahead and tighten that assembly down and it's gonna sandwich itself right in between those, um, right in between those posts and make sure that before you go all the way tight, that that transducer is sitting level. So it looks like I need to click it down one setting, one notch in that. And I actually like the way that that's sitting right there. So snug it up one last bit. Now you're ready to feed the transducer cable all the way through the entire length of the cable. It's gonna go through this scupper hole. And I'm just gonna reach through Pull all 20 feet of that right on. Transducer mount goes right back into place and fastens down with the two pan heads you removed initially. With a fish finder installation on your Mirage Lynx, cable management is something that you're gonna have to consider and figure out what works best for you. I've laid out the transducer cable kind of mocked up the fit how I want everything to sit on the kayak. I've left just enough length um, past this main bundle of cable that's going to be zip tied eventually to keep it like that um, to plug into the head unit. So what I'm going to do is tidy zip tie this up and then I'm going to use a night eyes tie that's easily removable so I can take it off the seat and remove the seat from the kayak. Um, one reason I wouldn't want to zip tie to the seat frame is because when I'm loading up at the end of the day, I want to be able to remove the seat, stow that in the back of my truck or car, and um, have the cables for the fish finder stay with the hull itself. So I'll show you guys what I'm going to do there uh, to keep everything secure and from not sliding around on the deck, a couple night eyes ties there, and one around the seat just to keep all the cable from moving around. I prefer the fish finder head unit on my right hand side. Uh, that means that typically when I'm landing a fish, I'll work the fish around to the left hand side of the kayak, land the fish there where I have some open space to work with. And um, I'm, a, I'm able to also control the settings on the fish finder easily with my right hand. Just a little bit more natural being that I'm right handed. The Nakwa battery that's gonna power our unit will stow right inside the pouch here. And the reason I'm stowing it in the pouch and running the cable kind of down and following the same trajectory as the transducer cable after that once it reaches the deck 
Um, I want this battery to stay out of the splash zone. Even though it is a waterproof battery and there's gasketed plugs on each end to keep the terminals nice and dry, I still don't like the idea of the, um, the battery being so low to the deck. Um, you know, when the wind and conditions come up and you get a little chop coming over the deck of the kayak, I want to keep this battery nice and dry, so I'm going to keep it up there elevated a bit off the deck. Here's those zip ties going on, and I'm just going to trim that tag end. I'm going to do two zip ties, one around each side of the bundle here. And you don't want to pull these zip ties too tight. You just want it snug enough so the coil is not going to want to um, unravel on you. If you end up um, cinching the zip, zip ties too tight, it could compromise the performance of the transducer cable that's inside the casing there. I'm going to use this night eyes tie to just go around the seat a couple times, keep that bundle from sliding, and then make much smaller ones that would suit this application probably a little bit better. Uh, but this is what I have and it works just fine. I'm gonna come up here and I'm also gonna do just a couple wraps and a real small tie would work just great for this, but I'm gonna do a couple wraps just around the each end of the handle. I like the way that that's set up right there. I've got just enough slack in the cable to where I'm not gonna be pulling on those terminal ends. So I'm just gonna go ahead and crimp this right to the wire. And make sure you're going black to black and red to red. After you've crimped it, give it a little tug. Make sure it's secure. Hopefully it's long enough. Okay, and we're gonna use a little heat, shrink this up. These are adhesive lined heat shrink butt connectors, so they create a really nice watertight seal. And you wanna start from the middle of the heat shrink and work your way toward the edges, just so you don't get any air bubbles inside the heat shrink tube. Pull that straight and it's gonna stay pretty hot, but I like to press it together just to get it a little bit more compact for that black heat shrink to go back over it and also get the adhesive to stick to the wire casing. And you're gonna wanna keep that straight while that adhesive lining dries because it's gonna get a little bit hard right at the butt connector. Once it's cool enough to not stick to the heat shrink, I'm gonna slide that right over and then we're gonna shrink this up as a second measure of protection. Again, working from the middle out. Also cleans up the finish on this. So there's your connection between the Nakwa power cable and the fish finder power cable right there. So we're plugged in there. We can tie into these same uh, night eyes ties at the handle and at the back of the seat. Make sure the two tabs align on the male and female end of the Nakwa plug. And then just tighten that cap down. That's gonna compress the gasket and get you a nice seal on that plug end. And then I'm just gonna put everything right in the seat back pouch there. 
That does it for the fish finder installation on this Mirage Lynx. This is a great example of how fish finders will install in general. There's a plenty that you can do to make it your own and you can also install those higher end side scanning transducers if you wish. Um, so check out the other videos in our rigging series for more information on those installations. I'm really excited to get on the water with my new Mirage Lynx. The simplicity and uniqueness of this platform is going to be really fun for me. I've really enjoyed accessorizing this with just the essential tools that allow me to fish efficiently on the water. I added the power pole to the inserts in the aft deck, I added the fish finder up in front of the seat, and I'll add a couple other gear storage options like an H crate, maybe a live well if I'm going live bait fishing for the day. But I'm really looking forward to the quickness and ease of which this kayak assembles. I can add the accessories to it, get on and off the water with ease, and back on with my day. This kayak makes a perfect travel companion, especially if you're stacking a pair on a roof rack and you want to go camping for the weekend, enjoy those alpine lakes, or get into a little bit of a different setting. Easy to carry, easy to transport. You're going to love the Mirage Lakes.